Just when you thought that, hey, we finally have a game, just a cathartic ass-kicking, the Vikings finally flexing, showing the league what they could be, up 29 nothing at the half, and you're thinking, hmm, we can finally enjoy a Vikings football game. Nope. Nope, uh, of course not. Of course, it has to come down to the final play. Of course, it has to be a one-score game, but the Vikings win. Emerge victorious, 36-28. Good times. Good times. They're the best 6-7 and seven team in NFL history. Uh, I-, I was told that a win is a win. Like You are what your record says you are. And the Vikings are finally trending towards the right direction yes they probably have to win out to give themselves the best shot at making the playoffs currently 36 percent to make the dance per 538 but uh earlier in this week we did a video where we implored the team to just have pride have pride in your shirt play for each other screw zimmer and whatnot and just do it do the damn thing and they did for a half of football they kicked some mf and ass and for the second half held on for dear life but this is what the team is capable of every single week. First half. <laughs> First half. That's what's been so frustrating about this team. But uh, Vikings stay alive and um, move to 6-7. and seven. Cool. We got some winners and we got some losers. Man of the match, of course, has to be Dalvin Cook. Now, it was going to be him either way. But the fact that he had the best game of his career is just, just astonishing. Now, athletes... <laughs> Athletes generally are not heroes for what they do on the field. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of uh, real heroes uh, out in the real world, right? But in the context of sports, Dalvin was heroic tonight. Career high, 205 yards on the ground, uh, which is also an NFL season high. Two touchdowns as well. 11 days removed from having his arm ripped out of its socket, which is just insane. And it shows the leadership. It shows the tenacity because Dalvin... Yeah, he, he's a pretty quiet guy. He's a man of few words, but he wears that Captain C for a reason because he sets the tone. He leads by example. And all the other players on the Vikings team, they saw Dalvin Cook with that dislocated shoulder and labor issues. He's had shoulder issues his entire life. His shoulders are probably going to be ass uh, down the line. As he gets older, he'll probably have to have shoulder replacement surgery. But they see him strapping it up. And guess what? Giving a, a damn performance uh, of his life. Uh, and they're like, oh, uh, I guess I can play. I guess I can give everything on this play. I guess my elbow doesn't hurt. All, all that stuff. But he ran like he was shot out of a cannon because, remember, uh, it was his shoulder. So his legs were fine. And his legs actually got two weeks of rest. So he was just champing at the bit to get after it, man. 20-yard run, 16-yard run, 30-yard run, etc. Just a buck 53 in the first half, also a franchise record. And initially I thought, hey, maybe go for 296. Hi, Adrian. Well, what is up? Uh, but then I was like, when the Vikings had the lead, 29 nothing. okay, uh, okay, rest up Dalvin, give Madison and Kenny some work, and then they came back and were just like, oh, oh. Plus, big third down catch, cojones, uh, on the conversion late in the game to uh, waste a little bit of clock, good times. Winner number two, the Hellfire defense. Now, this used to be the Zimmer Hellfire defense, but, y- you know, phenomenal performance in the first half. Playing free, fast, Swarming to the ball, uh, they got their swagger back to the to a degree because they got a guy, a bunch of guys back from injuries and COVID. Uh, and if only this defense was on the field against the Lions. Yeah, uh, but Kendrick's got a sack, five for the season, career high. Harrison got a sack, basically he broke Big Ben in half, plus a pass breakup on the final play. Harrison was all over the place tonight. Pierce got uh, got himself a sack early. Armand for Watts had himself a sack. Sheldon Richardson had a big time game, a sack, a bunch of tackles for loss. Just he was everywhere, man. Bar leadership, getting that defense lined up properly. Wanham had a bat, bat pass on a screen. Breland Johnson had an interception. We'll get to Breland Johnson later. Yeah, me, me thinks that he'll pop up on this list uh, again on winners and losers uh, as well. And the unit finally was healthy-ish, and Zimmer is coaching like he had nothing to lose because he didn't. He he did not. Even though, oh, there have been rumors that uh, even if the Vikings lost to the Steelers, they wouldn't fire Zimmer. Baloney. Baloney. If they were embarrassed on Thursday night, and by the way, if they blew this game, that counts as like an embarrassment on the national stage. You blow a 29-point lead. Which was, which is the largest largest blown lead in NFL history? Uh, you would be fired. Yes, like that. Winner number three, 
the offensive line. The Minnesota Movement Company was back at it again, just opening up massive gaping holes for uh, Dalvin Cook. And yeah, you could say part of that was on the Steelers, who's uh, dead last in the league, giving up 4.8 yards per carry. But the Vikings were moving people out there. Ezra Cleveland, phenomenal. Mason Cole doing work as well. Props to Blake Brando, who they bring in frequently as a six offensive lineman, heavy packages. I think the Vikings may have something with Blake Brando going forward. And Kirk did get a little bit of heat throughout most of the game, even with TJ Watt out, so he obviously can't be perfect. And Ole Udo struggled. Bradbury also had some issues too, but it is what it is. O'Neal, stud. Ezra, stud. Mason Cole, stud. Next up, uh, winner number four, Justin Friggin Jefferson. Now, this was like a lock slam dunk the first quarter. I mean, they got him all the targets, but it, he faded away. Uh, Steelers uh, eventually started taking him away, opened things up for KJ and Gronklin, but seven catches for 93 yards and a touchdown. He could have had two more touchdowns. Like He, he got his mitts on two more, but it, it didn't work out. He, he did have uh, a drop that led to an interception, but it is what it is. It just shows that the kind of respect, the kind of – uh, attention that Justin Jefferson uh, requires in, in this league because he was getting doubled in the second half because the Steelers were like, hey, if we're going to lose, if we're going to get blown out, it won't be 18. Like It'll have to be someone else. A winner number five, Jordan Berry. That's right, the revenge game. Former Steelers punter. Outperformed the guy who replaced him, by the way. Uh, 48.7 yards uh, average on three punts. Also placed their ass down at the four. Beautiful little punt uh, to get there, uh, to have the Steelers have to march the whole field. They almost did, by the way. So what can you do? Honorable mention winners, K.J. Osborne, wide receiver two for Adam Jerome, Ezekiel Thielen, 62-yard tutty. Woo! What is up? K- I mean, K.J., eventually Adam Thielen, he will retire, and it could be the Jefferson and K.J. show. And I'm J.J., K.J., I, I'm fine with that. I, I'm good with that. Zimmer dialing up some blitzes, even on first and second down, which I didn't know that you were legally allowed to do, but whatever. He got after it. He's like, hey, if I'm going to get fired today, I'm just going to go down swinging. Don't care. Now, he did turtle a little bit. We'll get to that later. Uh, CJ Ham, props to him. He's a leader. He's a, a team captain for a reason, just making big holes with the Vikings offensive line, just leading the way. Well, the Vikings are one of the better running teams in the league because of CJ Ham. And even though the fullback is going by the way of the uh, Doe Do Bird, the Vikings do have the best one in the league. Also, Armand for Watts. Armand Watts is going to be a future starter for the Vikings. Uh, Diesel Thompson will probably move on. Michael Pierce will probably move on. And Armand is going to be here. And he's becoming a monster, man. You love to see it. Losers. Losers. There's a bunch. Chris Boyd. So the game changed with, with his 15-yard taunting penalty. It just broke. And it gave the Steelers their first touchdown. And then the levy broke. And just everything just... Blah, blah. And Chris Boyd, he can be talented. But he's got to rein it in sometimes, man. I, I love the attitude. I love the swagger. But you can't hurt your team like that. Can't do it. Bashar Breland Johnson. So... He had the pick, great, but he had the horrible DPI on Claypool on the final drive. He vomited on his shoes, literally. The firing with coverage uh, on the touchdown was garbage as well. And it's just, I mean, they were targeting him. Like, they were actively targeting him on the final drive and late in the game. Also, the Steelers posing after the Kirk Cousins interception down 29-7, to unless they knew something. I don't know. Speaking of Kirk, so Kirk did not have a good game. Like He was subpar. He was below average today. Uh, did hit KJ uh, for the bomb. Was good with Jefferson early, whatever. Uh, scrambled for a first down on third and long, sure. But two interceptions, one really bad one that should have been a pick six. And he was simply off all night. And, and yeah, some of it pressure. Some of it was tips and deflections. But his placement was not Kirk Cousins' placement like we've come to know. And he shouldn't have to be perfect for the team to win. And he certainly wasn't tonight. And the team did. So... Yeah, this is not a Kirk Cousins win. This is definitely a, a team win overall. Uh, Zimmer <laughs> playing to win in the first half, YOLO style. He's like, hey, I I could get fired today, so I'm just going to do whatever. And then once he got the lead, second half, same old story, turtled. Uh, he's played not to lose as opposed to playing to win. And also you know, early in the game, he should have gone for it in the fourth and three, three from 35 to start the game, but... Eh, whatever. At least he didn't chase points, which is kind of nice. Uh, also a loser, uh, Greg Joseph, missing a 53-yarder. Not close. Also missed a PAT. Yes, he did make up for it later in the game, but come on, man. I mean, I mean, come on. Like ma- Making one of those, the game's completely changed, but yeah. also the refs. So it's a cavalcade of errors again. Like, uh, they have the terrible towels for a reason. 
just let him hit the floor. A false start and delay a game on the Steelers on the fourth down conversion early in the game. They overturned the Harrison Smith Claypool fumble, which was okay. okay. The ruling on the field was a fumble, and it was close on the replay, sure, but there you cannot say that there was definitive evidence that his or oh, his shin was certainly down. No, it did not prove that. Uh, and also, they missed a false start and delay a game uh, late late in the game. That they actually called uh, neutral zone infraction. Okay, they missed roughing the punter on Jordan Berry. Uh, they threw a flag on third down on DPI, which would have ended the game. And they was like, oh, they would have picked it up. Now, it wasn't really DPI, but just that tease. Just that tease, like, oh, flag, we win. Oh, no flag. TBD. Just great. Uh, Bradbury had a couple holding penalties and was just, he was not having a good time with Cameron Hayward inside. The Ole Udo left tackle experiment, it's over. Uh, ugly holding call late in the game. Giving up pressure consistently is just, uh, I, I would rather see Blake Brando left tackle if you're going to uh, go that route without Darisaw. And then also Dancer had a pretty bad DPI on third and goal, but. You know, we're sort of nitpicking at this stage. I mean, a win is a win, even if it was just an emotional roller coaster. But six and seven, staying alive, 36% chance to make the playoffs. Monday night at the Bears. The Bears. Even though, oh, the Vikings never win Soldier Field. The Vikings never win a primetime. Vikings never won a Monday night. They did last year, and they're going to do it again this year. Square up at seven and seven, keeping Skull alive. But your thoughts on our thoughts, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once more, the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull. Production value.